Okay, so every new reader of superhero comics faces a defining question. Marvel or DC? Two vast story universes, two enormous casts of heroes and villains, two hyper-passionate fandoms, one choice. You can read both, of course, as I'm sure some of you have, but it's not all that common, and I think there are three reasons for that. One, DC and Marvel have a long-standing rivalry which carries over to readers. It's fun to belong to a team. Two, the continuities of each universe are so bafflingly complex that a person only has enough brain space for one. And three, for adolescents getting into comics, the third reason is often the big one. It was for me. I came to comics in the early 2000s via Smallville, the TV show about an adolescent Clark Kent, so I chose DC. At that time, DC ran four monthly Superman titles, each $2.25 per issue. Now that's perfectly affordable on a part-time staple salary, but I rapidly added more titles to the list and costs climbed. But it wasn't my fault. I was just following the story. See, a vital component of shared universes is the crossover, a storyline that begins in one comic and ends in another. Crossovers bring shared universes to life. They weave distinct heroes with distinct backstories into an all-encompassing tapestry, enabling complex narrative and emotional payoffs. This deep interconnectivity is what makes superhero comics so fun and unique. It's also an ingenious device for comic book publishers to make more cash. The highest expression of this device is the crossover event, a universe-wide story that gets everyone involved. Here is where you feel the interconnectivity most intensely. Here also is where you spend a shit ton. In the years I was buying superhero comics, DC leaned heavily on crossover events. The earliest I can remember is Our Worlds at War from 2001, which comprised 43 issues across a variety of titles. In 2004, they published Identity Crisis, which led to Infinite Crisis, which led to 52, which led to Countdown to Final Crisis, which led, predictably, to Final Crisis. Meanwhile, Marvel was doing its own crossover events, just as huge, just as pricey. And the costs weren't only monetary. Crossover events are a time and mental investment as well. There's a ton to read, a ton to remember, a ton to keep track of. I was full plugged into DC Comics' continuity for a decade. I had a blast reading those stories, but eventually the costs became too great and I stepped off the train. For me, the greatest strength of the shared universe, its interconnectivity, became its fatal flaw. Superhero storytelling forces you to constantly raise the stakes. A drug tolerance sets in. Villains need to get stronger, threats bigger. A building is on the line, then a neighborhood, then a city, then the world the galaxy, the universe, the multiverse. Ultimately, threat levels peak, and to feed the stakes beast, you have to draw on interconnectivity, bring in more heroes, have them form a team, maybe kill off a major character. This arms race has an inevitable result. Reliance on interconnectivity grows, crossover events occur with increasing frequency, standalone stories become rarer, continuity gets convoluted, and more and more comics require a college course of background knowledge to be understood. Understood. In the end, the only option left is a clearing of the board, a refresh, or a reboot. Now, full continuity reboots are very rare, but partial or soft reboots happen all the time in comics. Things get simplified, histories erased, characters are brought back from the dead. This is the circle of life in superhero comics. And it's the circle that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has finally entered. The MCU is the most successful franchise in movie history because it achieved the interconnectivity that we love about comics. In its first three phases, comprising 23 mostly good movies, Marvel introduced heroes in standalone films, crossed over minor characters, then brought the heroes together for crossover events, gradually tying the phases together with cosmic MacGuffins and a big baddie who threatened half the population of the universe. It was awesome. As a kid, I never thought I'd see movies achieve something like this. With Thanos defeated and the universe saved, Marvel has to up the stakes even further, so it created the multiverse and tightened the web of interconnectivity with a slate of TV series. 
a pattern familiar to comic book readers is playing out. The costs for casual fans are steadily increasing, and a run of lackluster projects isn't helping the situation. In a tightly woven shared universe, bad movies break a cardinal rule. Never force people to watch something that's crappy in order to understand an upcoming project. Once you do that, entertainment becomes homework. Now, I don't blame Marvel for breaking the rule. Movies are hard. Studio batting averages are comparable to actual batting averages. Two or three great films out of ten is the most you can usually hope for. For a decade, Marvel well exceeded that average, a dazzling Hollywood triumph. But the odds get everyone in the end. Bad and mediocre movies are just unavoidable. And so is the life cycle of superhero storytelling. Despite some online pessimism, the MCU is still doing great financially. But sooner or later, a refresh is gonna happen. It's the way of things. The consolation, as all comic book fans know, is that it's going to be one hell of a crossover event. Hey everybody, if you want to read more of my thoughts on superheroes, specifically on what makes a great Superman story, check out my book of essays, Escape into Meaning, which is available in paperback now. This episode was brought to you by Squarespace. If you don't know, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Their templates are flexible, their blogging tools are super easy to use, and Squarespace provides you with all the analytics you you need to iterate and grow your business. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com nerdwriter for 10% off your first purchase. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.